In the past few weeks, we've been preparing you for chasing a thread. We showed you in one video the machine itself and how it operates. We also showed you the, the math or the geometry on how we are going to be grinding our tool bit. Then we ground the tool bit. Now we're getting ready to go back out there and chase the thread. So let's go out back. We're going to show you how we're going to do it. All right, so here we are back at this old LeBlanc. It's been a workhorse for us for a lot of years. And we're going to center drill. We took a piece of hex stock. Uh, that's what we decided to use for uh, our sample, which we like the idea of a hex stock. Then that way we don't have to mill a hex in it, which is kind of an easy way to do it. So we're going to give it a shot here and uh, take a, a, our first cut. And it looks like I decided it was a little bit too much of a cut, so I backed off a little bit. And uh, we've sped up the video here, so it's not really going this fast. This is a uh, double speed. But to give you an idea of what the first cut looks like, which is pretty simple. And it looks like I'm coming real close to the chuck there, but it's not all that close, really. We're going to go back and feed in again. And remember, the diameter that we want for finishing is a half inch. And uh, now we got a little bit to go here, but I decided that we would take a second cut. And then I think we're going to go back and take maybe a third or possibly a fourth cut. So we're checking it here with the mic. And I decided we need to take a little more, checking it again. And it looks like we've got to take just a bit more. So I'm good there. And I love the chip. It's nice and blue. Uh, a few more thousand. So there you go. Nice blue chip. You can see it coming off. And a pretty decent finish. And remember, for what we're doing and for the, the, the purpose of this part, it's probably plenty good. So we don't have to worry too much about the finish. And again, we're going to be chasing a thread, and I'm checking it here right to left to see if it's nice and straight, and it is. And here I'm filing. Uh, it looks like my hands are a lot closer to the chuck than they really are, but that's just the angle at which we're taking this. Again, no need to, to really polish this, but it makes me feel good when I do. So I'm going to put a little undercut right here. So when the, we, we have a little bit of clearance for the tool bit after we chase the thread. So now we're going to align it. Remember, we want to get the, the point rectangular to the, uh, to the surface. And I'm going to adjust it here just a little bit. Now here, you got to be really careful. I put this, I put the gauge in here. And again, I'm putting very, very little pressure on it. If I put too much on it, what we're, what's going to happen is we're going to dull the, the bit. But that was to find the center. So now that we've got that, I'm going to blue it up a little bit and want to make sure that we are putting this, the first carriage, on zero because that's the one that I'm going to be backing off on a regular basis. I'm going to feed in with the top cross feed and feed in and out with the bottom. Here I'm taking a light cut. The purpose of the light cut is to make sure that we have 13 threads per inch. We already made all of our gear changes, but I want to make sure that, that that's accurate. So. We took our thread gauge right there, and I was happy we had exactly what we wanted. And again, remember the bottom carriage cross feed, that's the one that I back in and out, like right there. But my, my feed is the top cross slide. I think we're getting reasonably close. I decided here that I was going to double check the point. If you look at the live center, I touched it just a little bit and I really don't like what happened. I don't know if it's dull or not, but my guess is that it is. So at that point, I took it out and I took it over to the bench grinder and touched it up just to make sure that it was good. And I'm pretty happy with it. So it looks like it was uh, it was dull just a little bit. What was happening there is I want to make sure that I registered it because you know, I, as I took the tool bit out, I've got to make sure that I'm picking up the thread exactly the way it was before. Because if I'm not, now I, I could be hitting one side and not the other, or vice versa. So I want to make sure that we got it right. Now we're going to check with the thread gauge, which happens to be the 45 uh, thousandths gauge. And using the magic tape, we're going to put the two pieces together on the bottom, like that. And then one for the top, like that. And again, I spaced it roughly to what I thought was about a half inch because that's where we're going to be 
uh, checking our reading at it at, I believe it was uh, a half inch plus 14 or 15 thousandths, I think, something like that. So there we checked it, and we were pretty happy with it. We thought it was pretty good. And the nut did not want to go on. So we decided that we probably would take one more pass, even though it checked, it checked okay on a thread gauge. It's a little stubborn there. So we're gonna put the center back in, blew it up again, and come in here and pick it up. And there you go. Take just a little bit off. Check it with our wires one more time. It seemed to be okay. We need to take just a bit out. I think we're good there. Now the nut, you know, remember the surface is a little bit on the rough side when you're cutting a thread like that. So we decided that it was just as easy to run the nut up there with a wrench on it and kind of clean the thread off. Now we did clean it off with a wire brush and uh, uh, that seemed to help, but again, this is an easy way to do it. Keep in mind that I'm not really putting my hands in a dangerous position while I'm running the lathe. It's all good. And uh, right now we're gonna take an undercut one more time on the back side. And you know, I like it to look good. It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, it doesn't have to look this good, but to me, it's a part of the pride of, of the workmanship. And that's just the way I like to do things. It takes a, a few seconds more, but it makes it a heck of a lot more pleasurable for me anyway. And here we put a cutoff tool in and we're just gonna come in and uh, cut this baby down a little bit. Now that lathe is running there, it doesn't look like it. It was running uh, pretty fast. And I sped it up again, because when you get towards a smaller diameter, it's a good idea to speed it up anyway. So I like that. Now the cutoff was easy. And again, I'm gonna clean it up one more time. I put a few scar marks on there from the chuck because it slipped on me just a little bit. And again, my hands are not as close as it looks. I don't recommend this for a beginner because it can be dangerous, but then again, so can riding a bike. There you have it. At the very end, we decided to polish it up just a little bit. And uh, again, we were being very cautious not to put our fingers in danger, uh, which is easy to do. But then again, like we said earlier, riding a bike can be dangerous as well. So who knows? Uh, you have to be careful, at least unlike riding a bike or a car, you can control your own destiny. You don't have to worry about the other guy. So here's what we did. Cutting to the chase, no pun intended. There's our part. It looks nice and attractive. It's nice and clean, polished, got a nice fit. And the nut goes on her, uh, nice and clean. And I'm happy with it. So there you go. That's how you cut a thread, uh, part four. And that's how we do it here at Suburban Tool. Thanks for watching.